This is a mummified squirrel, which sounds like it's absolutely no big deal, but my grandmother gave it to me last year as a Christmas present. Put a bow on it and everything, and that is acceptance and love. My fingers to the bone, not a pretty little penny have I got to show. I ain't looking for much, just a little bit of rest by the side of the road. I've always done some kind of art and or craft. Um, went through a chain mail phase for a while, did painting for a while, did, you know, just general fashion for a while. I've always been in the middle of something. It didn't really even occur to me that, that bones would be a medium to work with. I mean, I come from a background in criminology and I worked for a super short time as an autopsy assistant so I've always kind of been around that world but it never really occurred to me to incorporate bones into anything that I was making. My family visits a ranch uh, normally every couple of years and we just kind of go as a family. It's our big family vacation. When I was out with the, the young boys um, we saw a snake that was like seven eight feet long and so we were backing off from it and I called the ranch hand and told him that it was out there and he came out and of course shot the snake because that's what ranch hands do. The snake kept moving for about 45 minutes after it was shot in the head. So I knew it was dead, but it just wouldn't stop moving. And I thought that was fascinating. And I wanted to know what made it move. And I guess because of my background, I just decided I was gonna open the thing up and see. So I cut it open and started kind of dissecting it and, that, and all that and saw the spine. I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. It looks, looks like something that H.R. Giger would have painted. It's just beautiful. So I figured I'd make a necklace for myself out of it. And I had such a blast doing it and it was absolutely so beautiful and it was such a cool bit of material to work with. I figured I'd do another one and then I would do another one. And now here we are, you know, 150 animals later. It took them a while to come around, but I've always kind of been the black sheep of the family anyway, so I, you know. The, when They were all there when I first took apart the snake back in 09, and they were exhausted. They were like, do you have to be weird all the time? Really? But now, they're fully supported and they're awesome. Almost everything that I use, I harvest from roadkill. At this point, I've got friends and whatnot that'll text me, you know. <laughs> Fox on Loop 289, <laughs> this exit, go get it. Oh, I mean, there's certainly people that get super mad about what I do. I mean, I, the animal rights people get furious, even though they know it's roadkill. I'm not really sure what that's about. I really didn't plan on putting it out in the world. It was something that I was just doing for myself. And all my friends were like, oh yeah, that sounds like something I'm just gonna do, of course. <laughs> but everybody thought it was beautiful. Um, and it kind of, in a way, it transcended the weird into something more high fashion. And I think because of that, it was better received than, you know, if it was just something weird for the sake of being weird. This has been gradually gathering over all the years. Um, I generally only clean probably 30 or 40 well, probably about 30 a year. I'll pick up the roadkill and then bring it home, macerate it in the backyard, which normally takes about a month, depending upon the size of the animal. Um, and that just means I'm putting it in water and letting the bacteria take care of all the rot and whatnot. Then after that, I'll scrub it clean, put it in peroxide, and if it needs any degreasing after that, that's the part that takes the longest. And sometimes that takes, you know, anywhere from three to six months. I've been doing this since 2009, and the last three years really have, have been very, very kind to me. I've gotten to do several different photo shoots, had several pieces that were sent off to Germany for a photo shoot with Vogue. Um, so it's, it's been very well received in the fashion world. I mean, I, I think that there is a bit of novelty because of what it's made from. Um, but there's a lot of people that do bone jewelry, really. There's just not anything quite so elaborate. So I think because of that, it's, it's been better received. <laughs>